how did you decide to start up a champagne bar? Excellent. So the idea came from a visit in Barcelona in a, in a place called La Champagneria. Mm -hmm. uh, pronounced more in Spanish than what I said, but uh, it was very nice, cozy neighborhood bar where mm -hmm. you just get in. On one side, it was like more of a grocery store. You would buy your sandwiches, uh, mm -hmm. pulled pork, uh, the chorizos, and it was mm -hmm. mostly local people buying their groceries. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, this is what I found attractive about the place because it was built in a tunnel shape. Mm -hmm. So when you look at it, you had two distinctive vibes coexisting at the same time. Tourists on one side having the drink, mm -hmm. the nice cover, house cover, yeah. it was made by the family. And on the other side, you had the local people buying their groceries. Mm -hmm. So obviously you're attracted by that as a tourist. I came in, I enjoyed the beautiful bottle of cava that had no name, mm -hmm. and then the guy told me that they made themselves, it was a family cava, and they sold it for five euros, and... Uh, five euros? Sold, five, five euros a bottle? A bottle, That's but not just bad so you know, all. I don't know if you've been, I'm sure, maybe you haven't been to Spain? No. Okay, first of all, cava heaven, and number two, they treat it like we would treat a Molsonex. Mm -hmm. They don't finish the bottle, yeah. leave it there, uh, get out on the street, drink mm -hmm. it. Like they don't really respect it as we do, which mm -hmm. for me, I uh, have a huge uh, peasant heart. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Yeah. Okay, that's what I loved about the place. Our idea is to open up, if you want, a neighborhood bar. By that I mean, for me, what defines a neighborhood bar is a person like you who comes in, feels right away comfortable mm -hmm. with the service. Uh, has a nice uh, Rickers Red mm -hmm. at my bar and sitting next to you could be someone enjoying a beautiful uh, beautiful cava, beautiful champagne glass or bottle or even let's go in the expensive one, someone enjoying a Dom Perignon and this is the, off, the, this is the vibe and the effort that I'm putting into it, that this is what I want to offer. Mr. who has $25 in the pockets wants to enjoy the experience mm -hmm. and all the rest obviously. So we build this champagne etiquette that's pretty extensive, mm -hmm. uh, just to be respected, but the true heart of the place really is to democratize the bubbles and bring the bubbles the way it was brought to me in Spain. Like if it was something cultural, popular, and I think the gain in Montreal is that bubbles still stay uh, a statement, mm -hmm. a party statement. Yes. If you go to a party, and instead of bringing a bottle of nice white wine, Chardonnay, and you bring a bottle of uh, Prosecco, mm -hmm. everybody's going to gather around the bubbles, everybody's going to gather around the pop too. Mm -hmm. It's always an event. It's always different than just uncorking a bottle of wine, even if it's a beautiful motion mm -hmm. that I love. But the pop, the... So we thought about pushing that to another limit. How about we start sabering the bottles and inject that in, into to the local culture. Mm -hmm. That Montreal could, could be a city that savors their bottle of yep. champagne. Pay along the seam and mm -hmm. if the neck is extremely cold, the pressure that you have to put is minimum. Mm -hmm. So this is where, you see, this is not a, an amazingly yep. well done savory. Mm -hmm. But this is what the people don't know. And people usually, they go too hard because once it's prepared, like you said, mm -hmm. You don't need that much pressure. It's, yeah. I think, in the eight pounds mm -hmm. maximum for, for the, mm -hmm. the cork to pop, and it goes out at 50 kilometers per hour. So this is why yeah. uh, this environment has those little uh, mm -hmm. coffee pockets just to yeah. hold the, the corks, not from mm -hmm. stabbing some yes. guys. The savoring, it's not a big part of the champagne culture. You know why we do it? And truthfully, it's because Maybe you have thought of opening your restaurant in Montreal or your bar. I and thought briefly and then realized, no, it's way too much work. I'll let somebody oh yeah, else it's a lot that. of work, huh? <laughs> yes. All right, but I'm sure, okay, perfect. So you said it right. You said it's way too much work and for the reason being that, you know, you have to be original, you have to master your product mm -hmm. and you have to bring elements that nobody in Montreal, who are usually Montreal people are big travelers, go mm -hmm. to New York, that nobody brought. So Sebring is just a fun tool yes. to attract people. Mm -hmm. the, the, real, the real, if you want purpose, is to make them drink bubbles. Yes. But they'll come, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's that fun. They'll come because they heard about the same. Yes. Unfortunately, they won't come because they have the best ally. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. This doesn't bring uh, the masses. Mm -hmm. It will bring the connoisseurs yes. and the, the, the already fans, not the casual fans. Mm -hmm. Casual fans will come because of the sibling, and from then on, we're going to push that into them. We're all human beings. Uh, we all do our best. Some people really specialize in uh, different fields. My field, if you want, is the vibe. And in the vibe, I find that there is nothing that can beat a glass of bubbles. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that can do that. Even you, you give me the best scotch, the best cognac, yes, I will enjoy it, but it's a very heavy sitting down vibe. Mm -hmm. As opposed to bubbles that go up, it's a very, you know, like, mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean, like it's a very party yep. moving, even if my music is not loud and there's still a smile in the hearts, mm -hmm. in the people's heart, yeah. because they're sitting down and drinking bubbles. I cannot mm -hmm. explain it. It was once called the devil wine, 
uh, it was considered a mistake by a lot of monks that they used to throw this bottle that had the cork popping yep. out of nowhere. But in a way, it's it's it's, it's almost magic what mm -hmm. it does to a vibe. Yes. To an environment where everyone is having it. It's, mm -hmm. For me, it's amazing. Yeah. So yeah, I'm happy you give us that recognition mm -hmm. to understand what we were doing. My market will be uh, the Saint Cassette market. Market to start. It's a young professional between 25 and 60, 70 mm -hmm. uh, that just finished working and maybe have to take the bridge and they want to relax a little bit before uh, les embouteillages in the bridge. Yeah. So that's market number target number one. Target number two will come between eight and ten. It's people who either have reservations at beautiful restaurants like Lipici or Bremner mm -hmm. or finish their first sitting dinner and still want to have a vibe and we're recommended by our two good friends. Okay. So that's the second vibe, uh, my favorite by the way, because it's a little bit slower, I can take more time yeah. in service, we still have little bites for them. And the third vibe is what I call the zoo. The zoo is people that come out at 11.30 midnight are usually single mm -hmm. uh, and are looking for more than just the product or the experience. Do you know why I say three? Mm -hmm. Because the Saint Cassette people will fade away when the dinner yes. people will come in and these two blend really well. Mm -hmm. Now, the 11 o'clock part with the yeah. dinner people can blend because sometimes the people who had dinner become the 11 mm -hmm. o'clock people with too much yes. drinking and so that, That's how I see it. Cool, at which point? Would you like to try one glass before we end this? Yeah, okay. And any, anything in particular? If you don't, I have recommendations. Well, whatever you recommend. Okay, I re in a weird way, I recommend the first one. It's okay. my, so far my favorite. Okay. So just give me one moment, Sounds I'm gonna cool. order it and mm -hmm. we're gonna speak about it. Okay. Dead in the afternoon. Okay. It was uh, one of the favorite drinks of uh, Hemingway. Mm -hmm. So we have champagne, mm -hmm. and in the uh, little test tube here, in the provette, we have lemon juice, simple syrup, and a little bit of absinthe. Mm -hmm. So you just pour slowly the provette and the champagne. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I recommend just squeezing a bit of the zest. That's it. Cheers.